Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Coltair Partner Developers Limited Q4 and FY24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Smith Shah from AdFactors. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Nira. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the Q4 FY24 results conference call of Colte Partner Developers Limited. We have with us Mr. Rahul Talele, Group CEO, and Dipti Rajput, Vice President, Investor Relations. Before we begin, I would like to state that certain statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and may involve certain risk and uncertainties. A detailed statement in this regard is available in the Q4 FY24 results presentation that has been sent to you earlier. I would now like to invite Mr. Rahul Talele to begin the proceedings of this call. Over to you, sir. Good evening and a very warm welcome to everyone present on this call. Thank you for joining us today to discuss the operating and financial performance of Coltebatil Developers Limited for Q4 and FY24. I would like to begin by sharing with you our views on the real estate environment, followed by an overview of key developments of the quarter. After which, Dipti will take you through the key financial highlights. We then look forward to an interactive session with participants where we will take your questions and suggestions on today's call. India's economic search has surpassed market expectations, setting a promising path for future growth. Ranking fifth globally in economic performance, India maintains its position as the fastest growing major economy for three consecutive years. This robust economic performance has had a profound impact on India's real estate sector. Currently driven by a stronger economy, rising wealth, and consumers' aspiration for home ownership, the residential real estate market in India is witnessing a significant upturn. Preferences have evolved across all segments from affordable housing to luxury properties. Home buyers today are looking for places that suit their lifestyle and cater to their family needs. As India's economy continues to grow and evolve, the real estate sector is expecting to play a pivotal role in shaping the country's urban landscape and meeting the diverse needs of its population. FY24 marked another year of significant demand for the real estate sector and for Kulte Patil as well. With sales value of Rs. 2822 crore, we have achieved highest ever pre-sales and have closed the year in line with our stated guidance. Sales volume saw significant uptick of 20% year-on-year, reaching 3.92 million square feet compared to 3.27 million square feet in FY23. Realization improved by 6%. We maintain a deep focus on sales, registration, construction, and CRM, enabling strong performance in collection. During FY24, we recorded highest ever collections of Rs. 2070 crore. This, in turn, is critical to driving, exe uh, driving execution efficiencies, timely deliveries, and customer satisfaction, thereby enhancing the strength of our brand. As we continue to witness a strong uptake in the demand of residential real estate, our prudent balance sheet and a strong cash flow position help us to push the pedal on business development. In FY24, we acquired projects with top-line potential of approximately 6,095 crore. Additionally, during the year, we acquired 5% stake in Life Republic Township from minority stakeholders taking our ownership in the township from 95% to 100%. The total top-line potential of the township, including ongoing projects, is close to 12,000 crores. In the current fiscal, we aim to acquire projects with the top-line potential of Rs. 8,000 crore across our key operating geographies of Pune, Mumbai, and Bangalore. Here, I would like to talk about reported revenues and profitability. During the year, we delivered 2.06 million square feet and recognized revenues of 1372 crore. Reported profitability remained muted for the year, mainly on account of earlier period projects. 
that had lower margins. For instance, margins on projects delivered in Life Republic are recognized on lower average realization of rupees 5,100 per square foot. Overall realization currently at Life Republic have improved from 5,100 to 6,400 in FY24. Going ahead, the township projects will report higher margins. Little Earth project that was acquired by the company in 2022 had an ongoing portion which was sold with lower gross margins by the previous developer. Finance cost include the provisioning of rupees 25 crore for repayment against the funds received from Marugani Corporation. Finance cost also include an impact of rupees 39 crore on account of exit given to ICICI from the Life Republic Township. On an annual basis, over the next three years, finance cost will be on a similar line as FY24. Further, goodwill generated earlier on account of merger of a subsidiary has been impaired to the extent of Rs. 23.46 crore. I would like to take a moment here to draw your attention to the fact that while revenues are recognized for prior period projects, there are certain current period expenses like sales and marketing, HR and administration, administrative costs that are charged to PNL on real-time basis. Operating margins from FY25 onwards should see a meaningful improvement from the current level. Revenues for the higher margin project launched over the past two financial years will start to get recognized from FY26 last quarter onwards resulting in further improvements in margin. For FY25, FY26 and FY27, we are targeting a cumulative sales of rupees 13,500 crores. This is backed by sizable projects portfolio of rupees 25,000 crore. Accelerated pace of business development activities will further augment the portfolio size. For FY25, we have a strong visibility of launching 9 million square feet with a top line potential of about rupees 8,000 crore. Pursuing our objective of diversification, we are confident that towards the end of the year, non-Pune markets will contribute 25 to 30 percent to pre-sales. Life Republic Township will continue to maintain the current pace of sales with better realization quarter on quarter. On the overall, residential sector continues to be poised for significant growth with the buyers, developers and landowners increasingly seeking reputed brands. Capital is poised to capitalize on the current opportunity backed by strong financial discipline reflected in the balance sheet and firm cash flows. We look forward to the coming years with excitement and renewed enthusiasm to deliver value across stakeholders groups. With this, now I, uh, with this, I now hand hand over the call to Dipti to share the financial highlights. Thank you, Rahul. Good evening, everyone. I will now briefly take you through financial performance for the quarter and year ended 31st March 2024. Based on PCM based accounting, in Q4, we reported revenues of rupees 526.4 crore, and in FY24, we reported revenues of rupees 1,371.5 crore. FY24 EBITDA was recorded at Rs. 51.1 crore. During the year, we reported a loss of Rs. 69.4 crore. This is post-minority interest. Here, we would like to remind you that recognition of revenue and profits are dependent on the timing of project completion based on statutory accounting guidelines. Our net debt as on 31st March 2024 stands at Rs. negative 25 crore compared to Rs. 112 crore as on 31st March 2023. Our net debt to equity stands at negative 0.03 as on March 31st, 2024. Further, the operating cash flow for the quarter stood at Rs. 167 crore and at Rs. 435 crore for FY24. We are happy to inform that Board of Directors have recommended a final dividend of Rs. 4 per equity share of face value of Rs. 10 each. We have reported robust operational numbers across parameters to end the year on a strong note and look forward to creating bigger milestones in FY25. Our focus will remain on maintaining sales performance, timely execution, strong cash flows as indicated by Rahul earlier, which will continue to drive PNL performance over time.
On that note, I conclude my opening remarks and would now like to ask the moderator to open the line for Q&A. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking your question. A request to all the participants, kindly restrict to two questions per participant. If time permit, kindly come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. <coughs> First question is from the line of Ankit Gupta from Bamboo Capital Partners. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity. My first question is on the margin. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you speak a little louder, please? Sure. Is it better now? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my first question is on the margins. You know, if you look at uh, you know our margins for FY24, we have reported the uh, margins uh, for full year of around 3.7%. Uh, so the first question is whether you know, uh, like, has there been some delay in revenue recognition in this quarter, or the margins that have been reported in this quarter are at the actual margins for the projects which we had, uh, for which you know we had taken, uh, we had done pre-sales in FY21, FY22. Uh, thank you, Ankit. Okay. So see, uh, margin uh, revenue will re get recognized once we complete that 30-day notice period. Uh, once we receive the OC to be given to the, uh, you know, end user or the customer. So uh, for all those projects wherein we have received the OC, the part of that has been, uh, you know, considered in revenue recognition. While part of that will get uh, recognized in the ongoing uh, quarter of FY25. Sure. And when you say there, there'll be margin improvement compared to last financial year, are we taking 3.7%, which was the margin which was reported in FY24, or you're referring to 12.7% EBITDA margin which was there in FY23? See, uh, uh, Ankit, see, uh, there are multiple factors when it uh, comes to margin. So what uh, on what kind of base that we are referring to? As mentioned by... Uh, Dipti also, currently we, our pre-sales number base is close to 2800-3000 and whereas revenue recognition base is 1500. So all fixed O rates are almost double, I mean that is visible in our, uh, you know, the P&L. So from that perspective, you know, it is a journey from 1300-1400 uh, crores towards 3000. So that is, you know, visible in next two financial years. So once we deliver that kind of, you know, revenue recognition, so certainly margins are going to come. Having said that, you know, there were few projects uh, that uh, got launched before uh, FY23, I mean, December to be precise, October, November uh, of 22, uh, before that, which had a low margin. So all projects we, which we have launched uh, post October, November 2022 have a good margins, good GP margins and at project level. So certainly this are going to get uh, reflected into our revenue recognition in last quarter of FY26 onwards and you will see a significant betterment in margins overall and at the same time base of revenue recognition will be on a higher of upwards of 2600 to 3000 in FY26 so considering that and considering the proportionate uh, you know pro rata distribution of ORF margins will be significantly improved in FY26 and it is a journey for uh, in FY25 it will be a journey from uh, you know the current levels to you know the uh, late teens uh, uh, margins. But but Rahul, I fail to understand one thing. You know, you you have you, you talked about Life Republic realization, which were around 5100. Those projects getting recognized. But I thought, you know, Life Republic even at 5100, uh, you know, rupee uh, realization, our margins should have been much higher than what has been reported uh, in the current financial year. So see, I uh, can understand certain projects being low margin, but Life Republic at 5100 rupees realization. Reporting such low margins is something which I fail to understand. So see, uh, 
there were a couple of projects at uh, Life Republic which uh, we sold. I mean, because of the, uh, uh, you know, so uh, mismatch of the APR realization and the contracting strategies, the margins were lower. But having said that, for all projects going forward, or rather from, uh, you know, November, December 22 onwards, over there, our average price realization is more than 6,000 uh, rupees square feet, and the margins are significant. I mean, just to, you know, explain for a better understanding of uh, for every Everyone, see, uh, since last uh, few quarters, we are calculating the embedded EBIT uh, uh, at a project level. So, if you see the embedded EBIT, uh, whatever the inventory that we have sold in FY23, if you see the embedded EBIT of that, the entire, whatever the margins that we have considered at business plan, multiplied by the sales number achieved in that specific project. So, if we do that calculation for FY23, those number is close to 18, 19 percent. And for FY24, these numbers have improved from 18-19% to 26%. And in fact, we are either matching our, uh, you know, the business plan APR numbers or we are surpassing those numbers in terms of, you know, actual sales. And at the same time, the cost, uh, which is the cost of construction, that is within the, you know, the budgeted uh, number. So certainly all these projects which are getting sold currently are going to get delivered in next few, you know, years and going to, you know, will get reflected into, a, you know, better revenue recognition numbers. We do understand because of a lower base also, there is a, you know, the impact uh, in terms of the margin uh, uh, in the uh, concluded financial year. My second question was on the launches front, you know, when uh, each and every real estate, listed real estate player have been surpassing their guidance on the launches front, we have fallen significantly short of our 5,000 crore guidance which were there for FI24 launches and we have, you know, done launches of 3,800 crore in this uh, current, in FI24 and uh, so what were the reasons for that and on top of that, you know, we are projecting 8,000 crore worth of launches in FI25. So it's almost double the launches which we had, uh, which we have done in FY24. So how confident are we of achieving those launches, and how how much of this uh, launches that we are planning in FY25 have we launched in uh, current uh, quarter till you know May? If you can talk about that. So uh, in regards to the the launches guide uh, guideline and our uh, you know the actual uh, launches. See, uh, it was some strategic call that we purposefully, uh, you know, the uh, re, uh, um, uh, purposefully postponed couple of launches and particularly at Life Republic. If you see, we wanted to launch a premium project at Life Republic, but what we realized that the current ongoing projects till the time we are, uh, you know, not achieving a good sales traction in the current ongoing projects, it is not advisable to have a premium project at Township. So uh, currently we are, you know, that is under, uh, you know, RERA approval and in next uh, 30 to 45 days that uh, project with a top line potential of around 1300-1400 crores will get launched, which is a R5 sector. So uh, likewise, there were a couple of misses. Uh, let me accept that. One is a Wagoli, which was supposed to get launched in a Q4, and the other was NIBM, which was again supposed to launch in Q4 of concluded financial year. So uh, Wagoli, we have, uh, you know, we are uh, working on the RERA and NIBM. Uh, so last leg, uh, uh, last leg of approval is we are waiting for that. And, uh, you know, this, certainly these projects are going to uh, get launched in Q1 and Q2 of this financial year itself. Uh, now, uh, coming to the second part of your question about the yes industry, we are also positive about the achieving a good, good sales uh, number. Hence, we are talking about 13,500 crores of pre-sales number in, for the next three years. See, you have to understand the fact that we are not just focusing on the, you know, uh, just achieving a sales number. So, if you see, if you see the project by project, our per square foot realization is also going up. So, just to tell you, whatever our business plan numbers at Life Republic alone, I'm repeating, at Life Republic alone, in the entire year, we have earned or we have sold the inventory of around 55 crores more as compared to our business plan number. So, that is going to add directly to my, you know, PNL. So, there are, so internally we have a APR approval policy on a monthly basis. Over and above that, team has achieved 55 crores of more realization at Life Republic project. So our focus is equally on better, uh, you know, the margins or better, uh, you know, improvement in the price realization. So in Q1 and Q2, we are talking about, uh, you know, launches to the tune of 
around 3500 crores and we are confident of the launching this kind of inventory so all projects which are visible in our priority launches particularly from pune will get launched in q1 and q2 and likewise a uh, couple of projects at life republic will get launched and uh, uh, mumbai will come in the q3 and q4 of this financial year so we are confident of launching 8000 uh, crores worth inventory in this financial year how many Thank projects have we launched till date ankit sorry to interrupt you i'll request to come back for a follow up that was part of my last question as well you know how many projects have we launched in the current uh, in till may in april and may uh, two projects we have launched uh, okay in, um, 55 days so, thanks thank you participants uh, kindly restrict to two questions per participant and please come back for a follow up question next question is from my of apurva bandi from white white stone financial advisors please go ahead yeah hi sir sir so for the presentation uh, we have uh, we have ongoing and unsold plus under approval plus land bag uh, of rupees 1170 crores right so this is the potential revenue which is yet to be sold but there would be some revenue which is already sold but not yet recognized in pnl statement right so, so how much would that be no see when we are talking about this project portfolio this is completely a unsold project portfolio okay yes so uh, so uh, we have a three classification under that one is a you know approved second is a approved and rera registered third is under approval uh, and fourth is a pure land bank so combination of this three or four uh, you know uh, thing it is 25000 crores okay good thank you that's it thank you next question is from the line of shriranj mehta from equity securities please go ahead uh, yeah thanks for the opportunity so my first question is pertaining to the uh, you know the uh, bd which we've indicated so uh, you know last year we were talking about closure to 8000 and the number which we've done is 6000 and that also includes a part of lr so at this for at this stage for the safe you know same we are almost at half so why not you know despite of that we are just talking about 8000 uh, this year shouldn't it be on a higher side because last year anyway you know, we were on a lower side uh, so shayan see uh, bd is a function of you know uh, three things one is uh, you know the right assessment of law second is a uh, you know the legal due diligence and third is the you know the the marketability of that plot so uh, oh yeah so we are confident of achieving this kind of 8000 crores of uh, uh, gdv closure in this uh, financial year hence we are you know committing on that but having said that we are evaluating a couple of sizable uh, you know uh, business development opportunity but uh, you know it takes time also when we are directly dealing with farmers so to compute the transaction it takes you know multiple quarters when we are dealing with uh, some aggregators so so because of that we don't want to you know over promise uh, but we are confident uh, of uh, you know considering our current funneling we are confident of achieving 8000 crores of uh, uh, bd numbers sure okay sure so second question is you know if you refer to our slide <clears throat> where we've given you know the entire details of the land bank so lr land bank seems to have increased quarter and quarter so is there an increase in fsi or something which we've uh, incorporated uh, uh, no see particularly lr so uh, uh, i'm sure uh, in current presentation we must have added that uh, 2000 crores of uh, bd that we have done in the uh, you know concluded financial year otherwise see i have also discussed earlier so currently uh, just for a better understanding of uh, for everyone so this township earlier was into stp which was having a 0.5 fsi then right. four years back we converted this into a ITP with a one FSI without any you know additional cost and 0.7 FSI with a, a premium of 110 rupees per square feet. So currently we are with a 1.7 FSI. So while calculating number, uh, so not even we are consuming this 1.7 FSI. And now according to a recent circular. So two is the base FSI for township and there is a, you know, a premium FSI that can be available with, by paying some uh, additional, uh, uh, you know, premium. 
So we have not factored in this additional benefit. So currently we are evaluating, as I mentioned in earlier, so we are launching a, a premium or a 24K product in township very soon, a high-rise pro product, which is of 130 uh, uh, meter high tall, as against our current developments of 70 meters. So uh, this is giving us a you know opportunity to consume more FSI on a same land parcel, just for a simplicity, four years back, uh, in couple of sectors, we used to consume 1 lakh square feet per acre. Now, consistently, we are consuming around uh, 1.8 to 2 lakh square feet uh, per acre. And with this new uh, you know, development, we are going to consume more than 3 lakh square feet per acre. So that is going to open up uh, you know, multiple opportunities for us in terms of the additional SSI consumption within the same township. But it is too early to comment on that. So it depends on the success of this, uh, you know, the launch that we are proposing. Got it, got it, got it. And so lastly, on the pre-sales guidance, which we are giving closer to 13 and a half thousand odd crores. So, you know, in, in any case, we were talking about 3500 odd crores for 25 and so on. So if I do a rough math, we are talking about closer to say 20, 25% CAGR growth. Whereas, you know, sizable companies, you know, which are almost 4X of our numbers, they are talking about 25-30% at that base. So why are we, you know, very conservative or, you know, going very slow on that front? Be it BD, be it, you know, the pre-sales numbers across, the, are we being, you know, aren't we, we uh, do you think we are being very conservative on that front? Uh, see, uh, Shayan, uh, whatever the projects that we have launched, so we are not conservative in terms of pre-sales number, but whatever the inventory that we have launched, uh, uh, so, Almost 50% of that got sold out in three to nine months. So that is visible. So 3,800 crores we launched throughout the year. Out of that 1,800 crores we sold out in the same year. So had it been the case that we got we have got this as an opening inventory, certainly this 50% would have been at 70, 80%. So considering a strong launch pipeline in this current financial year, we are confident about the 3,500 crores number. But having said that, it is the right balance between, you know, achieving a per square foot realization and achieving a desired volumes. So, uh, so if you just for a, uh, you know, instance, um, just one year back, uh, December 22, we launched one sector at Township at 5,400 as a launch price. But effectively, we have improved, uh, improved price in that same sector to 6,000. Now, average realization of that sector is 6,000. Phase 2 of that, we launched at 6,500. So, there is a delta of around 1,100 rupees in uh, last 1,400, uh, 14 months. So, that is how we are trying to, you know, improve the, on our uh, APR realization across projects. So, hence, we are... Maybe you will think we are conservative, but we are confident of achieving that base of 3,500. Sure, sure. Sir, just one suggestion, you know, all our competitors in their PPDs give the embedded margins. So right now, we just so it would be better, you know, if you put it on the PPD itself. Uh, yes. So uh, we'll take your, uh, you know, suggestion. And secondly, sure. we'll work on that. Sure. If Thank you and all the best. Uh, so, uh, see, Sorry. once we are no. launching the project, so then we are in a better position to revise our guidance if required on our upward side. Got it. Got it. Sure, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you and all the best. Thank you very much. Participants kindly restrict to two questions per participant and join the queue again for a follow-up question. Next question is from the line of Viraj Mehta, individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Rahul. Uh, Rahul, if I look at we talked about overhead costs being higher and which kind of hurts your margin. But if you look at the total overhead costs put together is only 100 crores for this quarter. Now, even if I assume half of that um, is basically the cost you did not have to incur in your earlier projects, it still doesn't make you profitable. So but is it like the projects were sold like at such a low rate or we just did not estimate correctly what kind of cost that we will incur uh, in the future to build this because this just looks much much lower than what you have guided us in the past because we have waited for two years for margin to come and you had said that 21 projects should start yielding numbers by 23 and 24 on uh, i mean 
the calendar 23 and 24 fy24 onwards but this just and the commentary that you are giving means that even at 25 will essentially be a washout and and your project even before after that a little bit did not win number so this is kind of really shocking for uh, an investor to be honest uh so viraj uh, so the uh, for fy24 uh, there are multiple projects which has uh, you know the uh, lower gp itself at a project level so lr gp uh, was around you know 25% so barring lr so for all other projects the the, the gross profits were in the range of you know 11% to uh, 17 18% so because of that uh, i mean this is one of the reasons the second is you know uh, in last uh, uh, you know last one year we have added some uh, uh, investments in a form of ncd so as a accounting practice uh, the entire uh, you know the interest is getting loaded in this pnl which was not earlier factored in so ultimately the responsibility is at a project level not at a corporate level and we are you know uh, significantly uh, uh, having a better margins at project level after deducting even after deducting this uh, you know the ncd uh, uh, interest cost uh, on top of that uh, there were few uh, you know the like uh, in the opening remarks what we mention about the some impairment you know uh, so qle projects again we acquired in last financial year so that has uh, you know uh, pushed our uh, margins on a downside because over there there is a you know so we have taken over the stall project wherein the inventory was already been sold at a much uh, lesser rate and the margins were very low but you know since we have taken over the entire project so that is also getting reflected into revenue recognition having said that there are you know we uh, uh, we received uh, ocs in the month of uh, uh, february and uh, march so uh, because of that uh, since we follow those uh, you know guidelines very strictly of uh, giving actual position to the customer and then putting that into revenue recognition so position is a ongoing thing so had it been the case that this position would have been completed certainly it would have i mean the the gp just for a sake of discussion the even a 20% gp would have directly been contributed to you know ebita and likewise to the you know the margin numbers but yes this is the uh, uh, truth but going forward uh, you know uh, as i told you and as i asked by shreya Uh, certainly we take that as a positive input to you know share some details on the uh, embedded ebit numbers or ebita numbers uh, uh, for a better understanding see i mean rahul we can talk about embedded ebita but to be honest if i mean if i look at the commentary and and i know that you were not there in certain parts of the projects when they were and and in certain parts you were there like kivle you were there but in earlier projects you were not there but if the numbers which were told to us then do not reflect in the numbers today 3 years out then your embedded margins that you will tell today an investor will find it very difficult to take it on face value and that's just an honest opinion i'm giving you um uh, sir second question i had was on on bd uh, sir we have significantly lagged on on the uh, launches is one thing but even on bd right if we have to launch projects worth 8000 crores uh and bd as you yourself mentioned have significantly taken much more time than our over estimate uh, in terms of if you can give us at what stage your larger bd projects are and do we expect any more significant delays and then we still fall short or or, or we are pretty much there in almost all of it so uh, uh, viraj uh, uh, just to share so there are three projects in pune wherein we are in a very advanced stage and in fact uh, in this three project the design has been closed we have already applied for i mean on the name of the land owners we have already applied for the various approvals so uh, considering that there is a possibility of uh, you know uh, closing of this bd as well as in next few months uh, the projects can be launched so uh, this three projects has a potential of around one project has a potential of around uh, 1500 crores other has around Uh, 800 crores and likewise so uh, so this around 3000 crores worth bd projects are in a super advanced stages and the other projects of around you know we have a project pipeline the uh, mid advanced stage pipeline of around 5000 crores sure sir 
and my last question is sir regarding raising of capital there is one note which says that we are uh, thinking of raising 1000 or crores by debt or equity uh, do you really think it will be wise decision to raise equity at such a low valuation for our company where we can do 3500 crores of sales and we are valued at one time sale so uh, viraj this is just a enabling resolution and uh, you know last year also we uh, took i mean since last few years we are taking this as a enabling resolution in order to save time when uh, if we find the right opportunity right sir but my my humble request would be please take care of the valuation if if value if raising of capital happens at very less valuation the minority shareholders get and even the majority shareholders get hurt the most agree agree with your point of view viraj thank you thank you very much a request to all the participants kindly restrict to two questions per participant next question is from line of pratesh seth from motilal as well please go ahead hi uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, firstly again on uh, the margin so this year gross margins were around 12% uh, for full year uh, uh, you know how do you how much do you expect i mean sorry 22% for full year uh, how much do you expect uh, it in fi25 considering the projects that uh, you know are uh, due for completion next year so uh FY25, our uh, you know the uh, EBITDA margins will be uh, early teens, and FY26 we are expecting our EBITDA margins uh, uh, to a late teens or even uh, around 20. Sure, got it. Uh, so uh, roughly, I think uh, you know gross margin should be. Sub- uh, sorry, Pratesh, this is with a revenue recognition uh, uh, projections of around 2,000 crores in the ongoing financial year. and around uh, 3000 crores in fi26 so that's that's helpful uh, secondly on launches uh, you know uh, 8000 crore uh, is what we are aiming to launch uh, all of this would be launched in this year or it includes you know some of the projects which are large in size and probably we will launch uh, part of that phase so uh you know uh, uh, you know will that reduce the size of the launch that we will do this year or it will still be 8000 crore including everything so uh, whatever the projects or whatever the inventory that we are planning to launch in this financial year is 8000 crores so if you if you see from a you know approval perspective as we will be getting approvals for uh, you know the uh, uh, for a higher number but out of that we we are going to launch around 8000 crores worth inventory got it uh, that's all bull uh, that's it for my side for now i have a couple of more i'll join back to you thank you thank you so much pratesh next question is from the line of rohan from my thought pms please go ahead yeah good evening uh, i hope i'm audible yes go ahead you so uh, rahul i mean sorry to belabor on this margin point again but i'm just not uh, able to reconcile couple of things so uh, i think to a previous participant you mentioned that uh, lr at 5100 uh, there were i mean those were lower margins uh, however i mean some of us have been attending these calls for more than 3 uh, 4 years now and and i mean it seemed at least to us and it was also quite explicit that uh, the economics even at those levels were fairly decent maybe not not uh, uh, not very high but they were not uh, loss making at least to the kind of numbers that you reported here so i mean just to understand uh, because i think there is a disconnect between what at least i thought and i think that um, i think some of the some of others also who are who have raised this question so can you just maybe with respect to like public only can you maybe take me through like at what is the economics and at 5100 why were we at loss uh, i mean if you can maybe uh, help me so uh, uh, rohit uh, with 5100 uh, realization at that time few projects were with itc and few projects were with without itc so considering that and so uh, the the gross profit that we have achieved uh, in from life republic projects in this financial year is close to 29% it is not something that it is 
uh, it is on a you know very low lower side so uh, you know you can say the cost are uh, around uh, 34 3500 uh, uh, rupee on a per square foot basis and around 1500 uh, crore 1500 rupees of the margin so it is not something and currently we are talking about a you know the much better uh, realization hence that point was mentioned that does not mean the margins at, at 5100 were on a lower side because see these projects were with IPC hence the, the cost got limited to 34, 3500 and now without IPC cost are going towards you know the 4000 but again that we have you know improved our uh, price realization by almost by 1200 to 1400 uh, rupee a square feet so delta of net delta of around 1800 to 1000 rupees no, so sure. So, for example, you said that 1500 rupees is the gross margin, let's say, at a per square feet level. Uh, are the costs low, your gross margin so high that uh, you would have made uh, losses? I mean, that is something that I'm not able to sort of understand. Uh, because as far as what uh, what our understanding has been through these calls only, that uh, these costs which are there, some of it, which, which you, as you mentioned, are for the kind of pre-sales that we are doing, but still uh, at, at, at even like 1500, 1600 crores kind of stop line, you would still be doing maybe not like 18, 20% kind of margin, but at least 12, 13% kind of margin, which you've done in the past as well. So is there something which is like specific that something has happened and you've just taken a call to uh, on in a specific project? Uh, and is that, I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the reason for the question. I mean, we understand that PNL is backward looking and it is not something that, uh, I mean, but just to understand the business, uh, and, and, and to get our clarity better, I mean, is it that, uh, like the, the losses that we have taken in the last two, three quarters, uh, is it because of some specific project? Because again, LR, as you said, 30% gross margins or 29% gross margins. I am not able to understand why should it be uh, a significant contributor to the loss uh, uh, that we have reported in this quarter. Uh, see, uh, uh, Rohit, apart from that, the other projects has a gross margin of, uh, you know, uh, anywhere between 11% to 17-18% and overall gross margin for the concluded year was around 22%. So, LR was certainly on a higher side of the average, but since uh, you know, uh, we just try to compare with the current situation at LR and uh, likewise, uh, you know, uh, 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 there were few exceptional items uh, that got, uh, you know, recorded in this uh, financial year. So, I would ask Dipti to, you know, put some light on those exceptional items. So, Rohit, uh, like Rahul has already mentioned, there were certain projects now to help you understand the uh, cost breakup at LR. Uh, 5100 is APR and then we have a construction cost at maybe about 2500 land and infrared about 1000. Now LR is a significant contributor, uh, close to 50% of the revenues that were recognized. The other projects that have been recognized contribute to the uh, remaining 50% of the revenues that have been recognized resulting in a gross margin of 22%. That's one. Uh, second, there were a couple of uh, exceptional items uh, which are related to impairment of investment in one of the uh, projects at KPDL. So that uh, impact is also included in this uh, uh, EBITDA level margins, including the gross and the EBITDA level. So that's about uh, 16 crore. Uh, in, uh, that's at the EBITDA level and as a finance cost, like we mentioned, uh, there is some goodwill write-off below the EBITDA level and there is also uh, finance cost incurred on account of Marubeni and ICICI. So this uh, covers your uh, PAC level. So these are the major items that have impacted the profitability for uh, the current year. Having said that, even in the previous calls, we've mentioned that whatever uh, projects that have been launched in FI 23 and 24 are high margins, upwards of 20% at the EBITDA level. And these will start to get recognized at, uh, uh, at towards the end of FY26. Uh, we do understand uh, that while the uh, margins may seem muted at the moment, but at the project level, uh, they, the margins are sacrosanct for us and we've been maintaining that even at the business acquisition uh, point. If you want further details, what we can do is uh, maybe after the call, uh, we can connect uh, and help you give your line-wise details. 
sure. Uh, my uh, so I mean, fair enough. I'll I'll probably connect with you. I think the the larger point, uh, Rahul and Aditi, is that. Uh, Wait, sorry to interrupt. Your voice is not coming clear. Hello, am I audible now? Yeah, a little better. Okay, no. So I think the larger point is I think as I said, uh, I've been at least on these calls for a long time, and and this. Uh, uh lower margins was something which was which is fairly uh was not expected i mean we were, we were not expecting very high margins but uh, these lower margins and again i'm saying that this understanding of pnn being backward looking is is there so there is, it's not like that uh, i understand that but my request would be sir that if you can be uh, clear in your communication to help us to uh, to understand your business better and and also your credibility in the in the uh, market community would be better because otherwise i mean there would be uh, a lot of surprises and then it will not be liked by the market so no i completely get uh, that there could be issues of the previous projects and you have taken a call to sort of uh, take uh, i mean uh, like uh, taken a call on them so which is fine but if you would have could have communicated it better i think uh the surprise would not be there my second question would be sir uh, on this uh uh so there has been some delay in some of the launches of the last year and and you uh, those have now rolled into the current financial year but you've not changed your uh, like uh, pre sales number uh and you still stuck to that 20% kind of growth which you had earlier guided uh so that takes us to 3500 crores for fy25 uh so I mean, just want to get a sense. Are you expecting some slippages again in those eight thousand crore kind of launches that you are expecting, and hence uh, you you still want to keep thirty five hundred crores? Or uh, if you can just explain that, because logically you could have. Uh, I mean, that number also should be higher. So just wanted to hear your your view, sir. Uh, so Rohit, uh, you know we uh, take your feedback, and uh, in terms of the launches. Uh, Uh, see, we are confident about all launches. I mean, the most important is environment clearance. We have received environment clearance for most of the projects. So, considering that, we are confident about these launches. And uh, you know, we are not expecting any slippages. Yes, there can be slippages on quarter-on-quarter quarter basis, but you know, grossly, we are confident of achieving this uh, uh, kind of launches in the FY25. uh at the same time i tried to answer earlier also that once we once these projects are actually been launched then certainly will uh, you know uh, will try to revise our guidance upwards but it's too early to you know uh, uh, revise guidance on the upward side at this moment so sure. no and just one last sorry question to interrupt you sorry one last come back for a follow oh, sorry i just had i just had a, a clarification this lr which is which was uh, which rolled over to this year when are we launching it sir i i think you mentioned it but i missed it yes yes so we are launching projects worth uh, uh, 2500 crores at uh, life republic and all projects we have received we have already received environment clearance and all projects are on track for launches which quarter are you think uh, uh, bringing these launches sir the uh, one project we have already launched and in the subsequent phase of around 9 lakh square feet uh the other uh, in the i mean uh, it will be at the end of q1 or q2 beginning uh, we are planning to launch around a project worth 2 uh, 1200 crores got it thank you thank you sir thank you participants kindly restrict to two questions per participant next question is from line of parishit kandapal from hdfc securities please go ahead Hello. Yes, Parishit, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, my first question is on uh, what is the contribution of uh, sustained sales? So, next year, guiding for thirty-five hundred crores of sales. So, how much do you think uh, will be new launches contribution, and what will be the contribution from sustained sales? See, uh, uh, I mean, in last two years, if you see, uh, we have achieved around around fifty percent of uh, sales number from the launch. considering that our numbers would look on a higher side but you know at the same time we are tr- we are trying to take a better price realization hence we are talking about around so sustainable from sustainable sales it will be around uh, 1000 to 1000 uh, 
uh, 500 and 2000 to 2500 will be from the uh, launches. So it's very mm -hmm. difficult to, you know, tell, and, uh, you know, the segregate at this moment of time. But, uh, you know, we are confident of uh, uh, achieving whatever the inventory that we are launching, apart from Mumbai, because the Mumbai projects will be in a, you know, second half. So 3,500 crores worth inventory we are uh, trying to launch in the uh, H1 itself. So over there, certainly throughout the year, you can see around 50% of conversion. That means so you are looking at a very low conversion uh, to launches from new launches this year. If I take sustenance sales of uh, 12, 1300 crores, that leaves me with 21, 2200 crores of new launches on a base of 8000 crores of new launches, so, which is about 25, 26. And you have done almost 63% sales from new launches in FI24. So you are seeing a significant deceleration in correction in the new launch sales. So, see, uh... Uh, even the last year, FI23, the sales from a, uh, you know, the launched uh, projects were on a higher side. You know, this year it was little on a lower side. Considering that, I mean, the, on the other side, we have improved the price realization. So it is again, uh, you know, Parikshit, as I, I tried to answer earlier also, it is a combination of, you know, the pushing the sales rate and pushing the, uh, the per square foot, uh, sorry, pushing the volume. So just for instance, uh, uh, you know, at uh, we launch a row house project at Township at 7,400 rupees a square feet. That project got sold out in a, you know, uh, 15 days. Uh, based on the, you know, based on the success of that, we launched the phase two, uh, a complete different project at 8,300 to 8,500. Over there, you know, so since the price have improved by 10% or more. So there is a, the velocity is completely different as compared to the earlier price point. So see, these are just, a, you know, in, when you are approaching a market, they, then you have to face, a, you know, the bitter truth. So we have to do multiple, uh, you know, the probabilities, combination and iteration. So based on that, yes, we are confident the market is positive. We are confident, you know, there is a uh, strong uh, feedback from the channel partner fraternity about our products that we are planning to launch. So, uh, you know, no surprises on a negative side that we can foresee. In fact, whatever will be the surprise, I'm expecting that would be on a positive side. But uh, as I'm maybe for the third time I'm repeating, I'm, it's too early to comment. The numbers that I have given are based on today's visibility. Okay. So my second question is on uh, the, uh, if Deepthi can address it. So Deepthi, I just wanted a clarification that uh, you said that the current earn rate of finance cost will continue for next three, four years. So which is basically almost close to 100 crores and also wanted to check if goodwill will also continue, goodwill correction. Uh, I correct it, uh, no. So goodwill has been written off and it's all concluded in the current year. That's FI24. And finance cost? Finance cost, uh, Marubeni will be there. Uh, other financial partners' uh, cost will be there. Uh, which is why we anticipate a 100 crore run rate for the next uh, three years, that's FY25, 26, and 27. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you. Those are my questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Next question is from Lama Himanshu Padhyay from Baljorok PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, Rahul, my question was on the business development side, okay? And uh, if you look at the uh, sales or the value of uh, projects we already have in terms of inventory, we are around 25,000 crores, okay? And we are thinking of business development of 8,000 crores, okay? Our sales, uh, even if we assume that 4,000 crores is there on an average, we have a next six years of inventory, okay? And what we are hearing is the prices are, and the expectations of landowners have increased quite materially, okay? So can you give your thoughts on how do you ensure that uh, this business development is happening at the right, right price point and, and is it really that good that we need uh, such a large uh, business development work uh, in the current atmosphere where so much of uh, launch and uh, to be launched inventory is already there? So, uh, see, uh, uh, what uh, what you were referring to about the project portfolio, 
see yes theoretically this project portfolio can be you know exhausted uh, in next 6 years but see if you see the classification of this uh, portfolio around 12000 crores is at lr so considering the current run rate and as i mentioned there is a possibility of additional fsi so certainly it is the uh, you know the perpetual kind of a perpetual uh, you know the, the contributor for the company as we are getting a good opportunity to acquire a land surrounding township uh, so in terms of mumbai and in terms of pune portfolio uh, yes uh, there is a visibility of next 4 to 6 years in terms of portfolio uh, at the same time what you asked about a business development opportunity or rational see uh, uh, that's the reason see now i'm just trying to connect the dots we are trying to improve our price realization so we are trying to you know strengthen our you know the sales mechanism because of that maybe a costly opportunity are feasible for us as compared to competition hence we are giving our attention to better price realization also at the same time uh, if you see uh, our contribution of 24k projects is a all time high see in last 10 years we have sold the inventory close to 2000 crores and in this ongoing financial year itself we have sold an inventory of around 900 crores so uh, historically and we are confident based on our current uh, you know experience that this 24k project has certainly you know ha uh, have the better price realization and better margins also so uh, so whatever the opportunities that we are currently evaluating so it is a combination of uh, upper mig mig and uh, 24k segment so considering that the product makes and one more point that i would like to highlight see uh, uh, we have uh, we have a certain market share of a pune as a locality since we are one of the leader in a pune uh, region but see large of large part of our uh, pre sales number are have already have been achieved from a northwest market of pune so we are commanding 12 to 13% of that market share but if you talk about the rest of pune i mean if if you talk about the 80000 crore as a pune market northwest is 20 to 25000 crores over there we have achieved around uh, you know 12% uh, of uh, uh, market share uh, 26 2700 uh, crores and in the rest of pune which is a 60000 crore market we our market share is less than a percent so we have an opportunity and we can sit on those assets so we won't be in a hurry to liquidate those assets like a uh, sold out 50 percent 80 percent 90 percent since it will be a it, it is a diversification for us so all such addition of business development opportunities are going to certainly add a value to the portfolio and certainly you know without uh, compromising on the margin since we won't be hungry for uh, uh, velocity for all such projects see my worry is i if i say that uh, what we see is uh, when the cycle goes bad na, the realizations don't go down but the costs uh, remain high or uh, keep on increasing and uh, the sales velocity falls quite materially and the irrs uh, become low okay for many of such projects and hence uh, uh, I know that we have a strong balance sheet so that we can hold on to a project for a longer period of time. But will it be really IRR meaningful if we have to hold on inventory for two years, three years, and we don't know how the cycle will play out two years hence from here? Uh, and what velocity will be there? Agree. Fair point. And which is why we are trending uh, judiciously on this uh, you know, BD front. And one thing, this 8,000 crore inventory, you also stated that uh, there will be some which would be bought from farmers and converted to this thing, and uh, some would be outright purchased. Can you give uh, out of this 8,000 crores, what would be, let's say, outright GD and some ballpark figure, not the correct estimates, but uh, and well, what see, type of. Uh, See, where, see, our strategy is to even for outright transaction, so we try to take the structured payment facility uh, from uh, you know the landowners. So, uh, so it is it will be a combination of outright and joint ventures. So you can say 50 50 percent, and uh, even whatever the outright purchases that we are uh, you know planning. So over there, it is it is with the structured payment facilities. And for uh, Mumbai, yes, certainly most of the uh, acquisitions will be 
you know, on a joint venture. I mean, the society redevelopment, we call that as a joint venture only. And Bangalore will be completely a joint venture. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. And see, we have converted our joint ventures to into outright transactions also. Baner is one such example. When we got the visibility of launch, we have converted a uh, joint venture project into outright. We have given exit to landowners. So we will continue to do uh, from that perspective also. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Pranay. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as the last question. We will take that as the last question. I'll now hand the conference over to Mr. Rahul Talele for closing comments. Uh, thank you once again for your interest and support. Uh, we will continue to stay engaged. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach Vipti Rajput at Kulde Patil Developers. Look forward to interacting with you. Uh, next quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Cold Air Parcel Developers Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.